Hey guys, I have a great idea for a screenplay. <laughs> 24 super best friends build a theater, make art, create a community, and lose it all in the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> It took me a while to admit to myself that I was a part of Piano Fight. I had been performing and hanging out with a group of 25-year-old theater nerds at off-market theaters. A grungy black box in an office building on Mission Street with fluorescent lighting only David Lynch could love. <laughs> I remember explaining to my therapist at the time about how I wasn't sure I wanted to be all the way in with this group of let's be honest, children. <laughs> I mean, I, I was a much wiser 30 years old. I stopped doing theater in college. I had a job and renter's insurance. <laughs> and they seemed kind of bro -y. Which became apparent to me one night at Off Market when we all screamed in triumph as a dude chugged tequila from a bottle shaped like a sword and then used that sword bottle to play battle with another dude. <laughs> or when on a retreat, some of the guys had a wizard's battle, <laughs> pointing lighted fireworks at each other from a distance on a beach. <laughs> I went to a women's college. <laughs> This kind of masculine adjacent theatrical sparring was completely foreign to me. <laughs> but I kept showing up and they kept welcoming me. And before I realized how far in I was, it was too late. <laughs> in June 2010, Rob and Dan announced to us all that Off Market was closing. But not to fear, they had, and this is a direct quote, put their dicks together <laughs> it's in an email, and decided to find a new venue. Were we in? In the months that followed, there were three-hour meetings without agendas and subcommittees without compensation <laughs> to figure out what this piano fight thing could be. Months of retreats with parties and flip charts with ideas for new space written at the top. Months of scrounging small performance venues and rehearsing in cramped apartments, banging my shin against Rachel Rockwood's coffee table that took it up at least 30% of her living room. <laughs> Months of becoming super best friends. An early document defining Piano Fight creative company membership included only two requirements. One, show up. Two, vote on new members, which required you to show up. So see <laughs> rule number one. <laughs> when I finally got in to see 144 Taylor, it was during a company tour of the unfinished, really raw space. Aside from thinking I would die of dust inhalation, I have one clear memory. In the center of a gutted bar, painted on one floor to ceiling concrete beam, was a giant phallus palm tree a palm tree that was also a penis. <laughs> this seemed both appropriate and disturbing. <laughs> and I have tried to find photographic evidence of this penis palm tree and have failed, but the fact that I believe that it exists is in and of itself meaningful. <laughs> <clears throat> hey ladies, I have a great idea for a pilot. Seven super best friends who happen to be women put on funny shows at a breakneck pace that tests their marriages and definitions of motherhood. Watch, watch as they become single, coupled, and then emotionally single again <laughs> while keeping sacred their bond with each other. 
I fell into Piano Fight because I fell into Chardonnay, a sketch comedy group of seven women sick of playing the girlfriend in Piano Fight's other sketch offerings. <laughs> I was new to San Francisco. I needed friends. And so I was saying yes to every invitation. So when a friend of a friend of my best friend's little sister invited me to a writing meeting on a Saturday morning, I showed up. Five women sat around a table piled with snacks and chocolate and riffed for two hours on their own material. It was bliss. Based on nothing but friendship and trust, Piano Fight was going to put up whatever we wrote. In return, I did my best to accept the name they, probably Rob Reddy, chose for us. <laughs> Monday night four plays. <laughs> Monday night, because who else has a show on Monday nights? No one. And <laughs> four plays because we're all women and four play is a girl thing. We're all women and so that justifies a vaguely sexy name. The first marketing push had a football theme. In the brosis sphere of early piano fight, that group that would become Chardonnay was my little pocket of estrogen. <laughs> For 10 years in four plays and then Chardonnay, we wrote and we performed and we laughed and we fought and then all of a sudden we were in deep, deep love with each other. Piano Fight gave us space and freedom to perform whatever we wanted. Sometimes it was bad, really bad. <laughs> like the first sketch we ever wrote together called Ralph. It was about a taxi driver, played by Rob Reddy, and his rotating series of cab fares. So it centered a dude, and then all the female characters were either drunk sluts or rude career women, and a little girl. I mean literally, vixen, bitch, and virgin. <laughs> it was a sketch that answered the perennial question in comedy, how many that's what she said jokes is too many. Four on 11 pages, that's too many. <laughs> Sometimes it was good. In 10 years, we put on 20 shows and one full-length musical. <laughs> Through job changes, weddings, and babies, and I have to say that what Piano Fight really gave those of us in Chardonnay was not bro at all. It was some kind of witchy friendship. If I told you we married each other, that would be weird, right? <laughs> then I'll just tell you about our most magical moment on stage. In 2015, I wrote a 12-minute musical called Ingenue. It featured seven women, all yearning to be ingenues because why should one woman have all the musical theater glory? There's a moment in that piece when we're all on stage together in this theater. We've each had our spotlight moment singing about our secret desires for ingenuehood, and we're gearing up for the big finish. We sing in unison, we are all ingenues. And then our voices rise a bit as we repeat, we are all ingenues. And then we all breathe. Our chests rise, our chins lift, and we breathe together one luxurious, unanimous, grand gulping breath. In that moment, we show up for each other. We show up as each other. My lungs are my sister's lungs, are my lungs again. I swear our hearts are beating at the same time. I think we can pull the moon back in its orbit. I think we can send street rats howling over the tenderloin. I think our voices are magic and our friendship is forever. And through the alchemy of creativity, we can defeat armies, stop time, and cheat death. Hey, Mom. 
I have a great idea for a podcast. Two women, super best friends, isolated from their creative community, gab about sleep routines, body issues, systemic racism, and unrealistic expectations of motherhood. <laughs> Sarah Wright and I have been writing a musical together since 2019. Sarah has three kids under 10. I have one and a demanding full-time job. Performing had become difficult for me and impossible for her. In our transition to motherhood, we felt deeply disconnected from our creativity and also desperately in need of it. We started writing our musical on Fridays halfway through 2019. When the pandemic started in early 2020, we waited a month and then started again survival style. I packed a camp chair, my electric kettle, thermos, tea, milk, lunch, extra clothes, slippers, and a hat, just the essentials. <laughs> <laughs> and we met outside Sarah's parents' house in Oakland using their Wi-Fi from the garden. We met in her garage. We met on her front porch. We met on her back porch. We met out of desperation for the sense of connectedness that Piano Fight gave us. We didn't have a bar to go to. We had kids to get home to. We showed up for each other in the garden. <coughs> hey friends, I have a great idea for a commercial. <laughs> a place where everybody knows your name, where you can perform and play and fight and sing and dance with new friends and old enemies. The product is belonging and the place is piano fight, the haven everyone wishes they had. And we had it for a while. This is what's hard to describe about piano fight. I can tell you a thousand stories about the people here. When Devin McNulty, midnight bacon grease dripping down his chin <laughs> screamed, I don't give a fuck about tomorrow! <laughs> when Kevin Fink fell asleep under the kitchen table and kept the whole retreat awake with his mighty snore. When Dan Williams woke up after a raucous party with hair that resembled Rachel Ferenczowicz's tiny dog, speaking a language only he could understand. None of these moments took place at Piano Fight. But none of these moments would have been possible without Piano Fight. This summer, my job ends. A job I took eight years ago in another world and another lifetime. And I'm moving my whole family to LA. Husband, kid, me. I'm terrified. It's the kind of thing most people do in their 20s. But just like I wasn't sure about Piano Fight until I was in it, I wasn't sure about being a writer until I was already doing it. Piano Fight made that possible. Writing and performing and trying and failing and sometimes succeeding at Piano Fight helped me realize that I am a writer. I just had to show up for my own creativity. There's a reason one of the only rules for early Piano Fight membership was show up. That's what we all kept doing, even before we had a place to show up to, even after we won't have this place anymore. Even when some of us moved to LA, Montana, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Concord, I'll show up for you, and you show up for me, and that's how we make impossible things possible. Jessica Millie!